I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and anybody who's a Mazda MX-5 Tragic like me will know exactly what this very bright orange convertible is next to me, because this is one of the most special MX-5s ever built. It's the 30th anniversary edition, commemorates 30 years of Mazda building this classic English-style roadster. In the late 80s, there was really nothing happening in this sort of small convertible segment, so Mazda thought, hey, will basically build a modern version of the MG Roadster and you know the MX-5 or the Miata as it's known in North America has just been a runaway success. This is the ND shape, it's been with us for a few years but there's been four generations of the MX-5 now and each of them have been really well received, they've sold tons and tons of copies but this one is one of the most special of them all because essentially what Mazda have done is they've sort of thrown the kitchen sink of kit at this thing to make it really the best uh, soft top MX-5 to drive in the ND generation. So not only is it very memorable from the color, Racing Orange is an exclusive to the 30th anniversary. It's got forged raised alloy wheels in this graphite color, big Brembo brakes up the front, Niffen brakes at the rear. It's got Bilstein dampers as well. It's got the LSD from the MX-5 Club or the RF Limited Edition as that was called in Australia. So essentially, you know, it's pretty well stocked. Underneath all that, it's basically an MX-5 2.0-litre GT Roadster. So it's got the 2.0-litre Atmo four-cylinder engine making 135 kilowatts of power and 205 newton meters of torque. But it weighs nothing. It weighs less than 1,000 kilograms. So it doesn't really need a big engine, does it? There's also a few interesting toys inside, but we'll get back to that in a second. The first thing is that, unfortunately, I've got to dash your hopes if this is the first time you're seeing this car because they've all been sold. Uh, 3,000 were built globally, Australia took 30. Uh, this one was number 219 of the global build and the next time one of these will become available is on the collectible or on the secondhand market, essentially. Now, one of my favorite things about the MX-5 is that it is tiny. It's very close to the dimensions of the original. Good on Mazda for having the commitment to develop a small, light, but still safe car in 2019 in an age where every single car out there is getting so big but because it's so tiny it ain't practical and as a result look you can't actually store much in this thing but that's not the point the boot is actually a little bit better than the old nc generation because it's not connected to the roof mechanism at all uh, so you can actually fit a couple of soft bags in there for a weekend away but i wouldn't plan on much more than that but the interior is actually more than spacious enough for two it's compact and you'll need to check that you actually fit if you're a big and tall person, but I'm only six foot and I'm a bit slender. So this cabin is actually perfect for people like me. Um, if you're much taller than me, the soft top may not work for you. So go and test drive one for yourself. Now, it's a really nice cabin. It's essentially based on that of the Mazda 2, which is Mazda's low end car, but with significant upgrades to make it worth the money. So this, this car was $50,000 um, offered as a special edition, but because they all traded internally, i.e. loyal MX-5 customers bought them, who really knows what they are worth. But this cabin, it sort of feels up to the scratch, I reckon. You get a unique seat in the 30th anniversary. It's a really nice Recaro bucket, combines leather and Alcantara with orange piping and stitching. I think it looks really cool. The body color extends into the cabin as it does on all NDs. And you get that orange stitched Alcantara on the dashboard and the doors as well. It all comes together and feels pretty premium. Love the steering wheel. It's a little thin rimmed wheel. No silly flat bottoms or anything like that. It's a traditional steering wheel the way it should be. Now, all MX-5s, including this one, have a touchscreen up here. Touchscreen only works when you're stopped. Otherwise, there's an intuitive rotary controller. It also comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, it's the first time I've driven an MX-5 with CarPlay, and it really updates the infotainment nicely for 2019. Then you've got a really beautiful classic set of two analog gauges and one crisp digital uh, cluster as well, but there's still no digital speedometer on this car. Not that you need to go too fast to have fun in a Mazda MX-5, which is one of the best things about this car. Otherwise, practicality, obviously very limited. There is a storage box behind you. It's a cup holder here, good enough for a coffee for one person. There's another coffee holder here, which is good. Tiny tray between the seats, kind of dodgy place to store your phone here with one fast charging USB port and one trickle charging USB port. 
And that's about it. But practicality, as I said before, not the point of this car. It's all about that experience out on the road and that's where we're going right now. So what is this very special MX-5 like to drive? Well, unsurprisingly, there are many similarities to the existing ND MX-5s, several of which we've driven together on this channel. And you can find that content by having a bit of an explore around. But there are a few noteworthy changes to the 30th anniversary that enhance the driving experience. But first, the basics. What have we got under the bonnet? Well, we've got a longitudinally mounted two liter atmospheric four cylinder petrol, making 135 kilowatts of power and 205 Newton meters of torque. And of course those outputs are, you know, modest for a sports car, but the ND MX-5 weighs nothing or not much more than nothing really. Uh, it's under a thousand kilos without me in it. Pop me in the car and we're still, you know, just over sort of 1,050 kilo. So this is a very, very light, small, rear-driven two-door. And so the dynamics are some of the most pure that money can buy on the new car market. And certainly a relief compared to a lot of very heavy, uh, you know, boosted sports cars that need a hell of a lot of torque in order to get up and go. The MX-5 just doesn't need that. However, this two liter Skyactiv-G engine is tuned to be just so, so revvy. The engine revs so fast that honestly, like you get to the peak torque point of 4,000 RPM so quickly that you don't feel like you need a turbocharger at all. And in fact, you know, you can leave it in sort of third a lot of the time and drive it on the torque, which is bizarre. Now, naturally you can also row it around you know, more ferociously than that. And this six speed manual gearbox is, is a very rewarding one. It's an extremely intuitive gearbox. The clutch weight, take up point, the throw, it all feels incredibly consistent and well weighted and enjoyable too. One thing that's perhaps lacking in the, uh, the engine department is actually that there's still not a great sound to the thing and the 30th anniversary doesn't change that. It's quite raspy and zingy and there's occasionally a little burble you know, when you lift the throttle, but that's about it. Uh, the 1.5 liter engine, which you can still get on the, the normal MX-5 is, is the sweetest sounding engine. And I still have a soft spot for that 1.5, but all of these uh, 30th anniversary cars are two liter manual and that's fine by me. Now onto what they've changed. Uh, firstly is the damping. So Bilstein dampers, they really elevate the ND experience. It still has that classic kind of you know, pronounced body roll of an ND, but it's it's just cinched in a little bit and the body control is mega in this thing. Uh, you can totally, you know, pound it. You can really lean on the thing through corners. You can abuse the, uh, the sort of fast throttle response and you can just get right back on it and you never upset the body control. You pitch it in as hard as you want, it's fine. And over really pockmarked back roads, the suspension just laps it all up and that's down to the Bilstein dampers. It's definitely a better package than, than the, uh, the standard fit suspension on the regular MX-5. Next is the brakes, big Brembo's up the front, Niffin's at the back and the stopping power is very good. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of mass to pull up here, but this one stops really, really nicely and consistently with less fade over several hard stops. The Recaro seats too, very supportive. They keep you in place during hard cornering uh, definitely better than the standard seat, so that's worthwhile. And also the uh, limited slip differential just helps to get that power to, uh, to the rear wheels a little bit better with less inside wheel slip, but that was never a huge problem on the MX-5. And best of all, that kind of classic short rear driven character of this car is maintained and it's very, very easy to, you know, come around a sharp corner like this one, get back on the throttle, and just feel the, um, the rear end of the car kind of help you push through the corner nicely. Ultimately, the MX-5 and also cars like the Toyota 86 and Subaru BRZ are very much about distilling the driving experience. It's not a car that has too much power. In fact, it's just perfectly balanced. This is still one of my favorite cars and this is one of my favorite iterations of one of my favorite cars. And the people that were quick enough to buy one are gonna be very, very lucky indeed because this thing is just lovely to drive. Not the best car on four wheels I've ever driven, but honestly, as an all round experience, it'd have to come fairly close. I'd love to have one of these in my garage, you know, on a summery, sunny kind of day or a crisp winter day like today 
There's just something about the Mazda MX-5, isn't there? And if you're the kind of person that thinks this is a car reserved for hairdressers, then that's a very sad, sad line of thinking. And it just means that you're ruling yourself out of one of the world's premier driving experiences. So those are my impressions of my favorite version yet of the ND MX-5, the very orange 30th anniversary. There's been a couple of really nice little modifications to the dynamic elements of the car. It stops better, it turns better, and I reckon it looks better too. I wish this was a series color, but I get the point of keeping it exclusive. Now, let me know down in the comments what you reckon of the MX-5. Is it a car for you? Do you like the 30th anniversary, yes or no? And while you're down there, make sure you hit subscribe and the notification bell so you never miss one of our full-length, highly detailed Australian video car reviews. And thanks for watching Chasing Cars.